decoy wise, you know, if we got a north wind, we're kind of bunching most of them up on the north side, stringing them, stringing a few of them down. Um, but even though it's a small hole, we'll still run eight dozen ducks and a couple dozen honker floaters in here. It's a pretty tight hole for honkers, but you'll kill a few. But the honkers are mainly for visibility. Um, it's 100% traffic. Nothing's ever going to be in this hole, but lots of ducks going back and forth over the top. So we want to get their attention. So we set a, a decent sized spread. The honkers really help with the visibility. <laughs> Hey guys, just showed up to Habitat Flats today. Uh, Asher and I took the big rig in from St. Louis. We're going to hang out with Tony and the gang and show us what this place is all about. Well, I'm Tony Vandemore. Uh, we're here at Habitat Flats. We're getting our decoys in for the fall and pretty exciting time of year. We're about three weeks out from opener. We got ducks showing up. It was cool this morning, 35 degrees. Had a first little light frost this morning it's a good time of year we'll take a quick tour kind of look at some of the farms it's got everything pumping here in the last couple days and a few ducks showing up but we'll get ready to roll so we had a uh, a blind that we hunt a lot and we built the blind several years ago it started started going bad it was an old one we didn't know any better got our use out of it for sure but we had another blind in a spot that we weren't hunting much and uh kind of in a time crunch here we just got the beans off yesterday so we just cut this other one off because we weren't hunting it and uh, we're going to move it over to this spot because it's a really good spot this complex up here holds uh, it's pretty impressive there's a ton of ducks it's something that we hunt hunt about every day i don't what is it probably 600 acres up here oh, and yes. at least i don't know we'll hunt one group up here usually maybe two occasionally but most time just one group uh, so we'll move this move this blind in here it's built right it'll get used a lot it's a heck of a spot one of my favorite places to be in the fall is up here in the evenings just watching the show because it's pretty impressive the amount of ducks coming into this complex it's a big complex it's got flooded corn more soil a lot of more soil and then uh there's timber between this and the refuge, and the timber is my favorite part, but we'll hunt the timber, get the ducks kind of coming and going to the corn, and then obviously hunt the corn as well, and the moist soil. This hole's in a big complex up here, and uh, this blind faces northwest, it's tucked up under this willow tree, so we primarily only hunt it in the mornings. And you got good shade there, and typically it's good for most any wind, but we've got power out to the blind, which is huge. So when it gets cold, we plug the ice heaters in. Don't have to worry about generators or anything like that. And it gets uh, gets really, really good in here. One of our dudes, uh, our main guy is Luke, Luke Cerruti. This is, this is his hole. He hunts it about every day. He cherry picks it, waits for him to get loaded up in here, and then strolls out here and hunts them it's it's really good neat spot just the volume of ducks is what's so impressive this whole complex up here is probably holds and i don't know how you put a number on it it's tens of thousands um, definitely definitely our biggest complex in terms of numbers of ducks it's neat to hunt just being able to see all the ducks and i mean it's obviously good hunting but very very cool all the way around just a cool experience walking out here in the morning nothing but a roar out here and then the refuge is back that way. They're coming from the refuge. Run them out. They'll start trickling back. Good spot. How many blinds do you guys have on this little complex you got right so here? So in this 80, there's two. Um, in that 80, there's one, two, three. And then the next 80, there's two. Next 80, there's one. Next 80, there's one. The next 80, there's one. We only, this whole big complex, I mean, I don't even know what it is, 600 acres or better, we'll run one group. 
Some days we'll run too, but yeah. in that timber back in there is where we like to kill them. Yeah. Coming, coming run to run traffic. This, run traffic, yeah. Getting under them, get flat line. Yep. Just a where lot of, a lot of ducks over here. Right here. So, so Swan's about four air miles back that way, four and a half. Fountain Grove's right here. Okay. Just, um, we're just kind of between the two refuges. Get a lot of traffic, and then obviously a lot of ducks coming to this spot. These are kind of our standard build. They're six shooter blinds, the base is 16 by five, and then there's a two foot dog box on each end. They don't have six shooters, so five, five and a guide. Plenty of room, comfortable. You got a heck of a view looking out over here. This well, we've got a trench where it'll come out out here, and then it'll come out right across on this side. And there's a pit blind out here in this corn. It's trenched all the way out to where it comes out right in front of that pit for when it's really cold. Keeps a big hole open, which is nice. Pretty much most of our wells and pits are, we've got wells trenched to a lot of the pits. All right, ready? Electric is so much easier to time. Tony is y'all's water pretty much running non-stop until it starts to get some rain later in the year or do you pretty much yep. have to run well, all so throughout the year? There's not huge output. I mean, that's probably, whatever, seven, eight hundred gallons a minute. But the good thing about not having huge output wells is this will just slowly raise the field. So we'll keep them kind of pinned in this corner and then we'll get some more water out there and they'll jump to the next fresh food. It kind of allows us, the water management allows us to keep ducks throughout the whole season. You know, if you get a, these fields have some roll in them, some topography changes, whereas you go to Arkansas or something and it's zero graded, they got it all at once. Yeah. So we like to keep it, like to keep them pinned to certain areas so they don't get all the food at one time. Works a lot better that way. And it feels cool right now. In the summer, it feels awesome, but it's 55 degrees coming out of the ground. So when it's 10 degrees, it's coming out at 55. It gets yeah. awful good. Yeah. Pretty fun time to hunt. Brits, blood worms, and they're kind of using the corn more for thermal cover or aerial cover just to loaf in. But you cut them open the first few weeks of the season, they're just stuffed with bugs and invertebrates. But then when that switch, when that switch flips and it gets cold enough, They'll go through that corn. It kind of makes a cornfield, you know, good the whole season instead of just when it's cold. Yeah. The bean strips help a lot. Plus, you got good easy walking, easy spot to set decoys, easy for the dogs to run through. Now, early in the year, y'all shooting more mixed bags early in the year, mixing in a few. There'll there'll definitely be a lot of little ducks species. here. Opener, uh, pintails, gabwalls, widgeon, teal, you name it. But quite a few mallards, honestly. Um, usually the first really big push is a couple days either side of November 7th. Uh, but there's, I mean, there's already some mallards here. Quite a few, honestly, and we're three weeks out. This is a pretty good push this last weekend on this first, first little cool front in October. Fun time of year. This farm was the first one we bought, and, uh, you know, Aaron and Ira had, had farmed down that way. Dan's had quite a bit. I have one right up here, but this is the first one we bought as Habitat Flats. And uh, it's kind of where our, we scratched the idea out and where we kind of saw it start to pay off. What year was that? I think that was in 2007 when we bought this. Been a while ago. Been a lot of sweat and work since then, but it's pretty neat to see in the fall. Oh, yeah. This hole is half pint. It's uh, probably my second favorite hole, or third, it's top, definitely top three or four. It's a really, really small hole. It's just between the refuge and where they're feeding at. 100% traffic, ducks pouring over the top of it, a lot of loud calling. And once you get them started, bunches stick together, which I really like. I like shooting into bunches.
but it's a neat spot, man. Really, really cool. A little, little of nothing. I mean, it doesn't look like much, but watching them work in here is pretty special. About as close as we can get to Arkansas up in our neck of the woods. But you get to get here with flip flops on. <laughs> yeah, this is sweet. Who, where did where did this whole concept, the little holes in the woods, come like start? Who who figured this out? Me and Boss hunting love. There you go. Said, well, if it works there, so y'all we'll... built this one. Mm-hmm. Said if it works there, I'm gonna try to find a video for you. Said if it works there, you know it ought to work in other spots. So we got this one, four other ones back in here. Pretty cool. Very, very cool. I gotta find it. The corn in waves. I mean, there might be, they might be strung out for half a mile, a mile. I mean, several thousand at once. And when that happens, we shut the wings off, no calling, no nothing, and just let them go. And you just watch, just watch them go. And then once the once a wave quits, then we'll we'll start calling at the little bunches that keep coming. And every once in a while, I mean, it's just inevitable. It happened a few times a season. The wave will start on its own, and you just sit back and watch them. They're all just pretty crazy. We try not to shoot in anything over 75. Uh, any bunches over 75, we let them go. Pretty neat for a little bitty hole in the woods. I bet on a snow day, it's real. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. leaving the corn or going to the corn or both? You probably hunt the morning, so they're leaving the corn. Both. They'll, they'll be going back and forth. Right. And you can stop them. And what's cool is, you know, <clears throat> the guides kind of hunt the same spots every day so they know their equipment's right something breaks all that but also they know what they're looking for like in here you know like that tree right there if they come up this side of the road call at them they're dead or if they're on this side of that tree they're dead if on the other side don't even bother yeah. and you just know these things from hunting places so long like boss and i don't love i mean you can just tell i mean there's some ducks just the way they look that you don't even mess with and then other ones might be twice as high but they got a different look to them. They're on the right side of a tree and you start hammering at them and here they come. So leaving the corn going to the refuge would be like a, lo would be like a loafing pond, yeah. right? So, but if they're leaving the refuge going to the corn, they're just curious? Yeah, I mean, purely 100% traffic. You'll never see a duck in these holes, ever. I mean, maybe a wood duck or something, but never see a mallard in these holes. It's just, it's just a combination of decoys and loud calling and it's fun. It's a fun hunt. It's what, to me, it's what I really love about duck hunting. I mean, they don't want to be here taking a wild bird and bringing them somewhere they don't want to be just because of calling and reading them and all that. It's fun. It's an active hunt, you know what I mean? Yeah, very cool. It's really, really loud. We change change reeds, what, every day, every other day? Every other day. Come on. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, split them out pretty easy. Spit. But, I mean, I'll... They've gotten better. The original the first ones was every day. Yeah. I mean, I call as loud as I can call. I'm telling you, <laughs> that's the way I call to get them started, and then you gotta back off of them. But you know, Cause you, you know this area. I mean, <clears throat> we're not the only ones hunting this. I mean, there's people hunting from one end of the county to the other, mm -hmm. and you just gotta. I don't know. We try to be keep their attention when you get it, and even like this this little hole here. I mean, we'll put like Boss and I where we hunt. We'll run five dozen honker floaters and eight to ten dozen ducks pick them up every day i mean i don't think it probably hurt because they don't live in here but when they're flying over in the afternoons and all that we don't want them to see anything mm -hmm. we pick them up every day honker floaters give you great visibility and believe it or not you'll get you'll get some honkers in these holes it's pretty cool to watch i mean they'll go around four or five times before they figure out a way to get in and then so honkers in the hole for visibility yep primarily and We'll shoot a few honkers, but primarily for visibility. Cool. Kill a lot of kill a lot of ducks over over goose decoys. They feel safe around Canada's. They stick out. I mean, you can see them from a long ways away. We run them in pretty much all of our timber holes. I need some naming help. I was actually in here turkey feeling? hunting. <laughs> We've been here turkey hunting, and we wanted another place. Like two in the back, the eagle's nest and the nook. They're they're lights out early really really good but then it gets to be the border of the refuge like it's been across creek and it's refuge but it gets to be where there's so many ducks so close to you that you can't do anything with them so i'm like looking for a spot to get away from it a little ways i mean we're what probably half mile from the refuge here yeah. Yeah. strong quarter 
600 yards, something like that. Even back there, though, the ones early, you still break them down. Yeah. But you can't compete, obviously, with 5,000 live ducks or 10,000 or whatever there is. What happens is when they're, they're first pushing water on it, there's a few ducks coming to check that water out. Mm -hmm. And for up until Thanksgiving, it's lights out. And then there might be 50, 60,000 sitting next to you. And I mean, it's so loud, you can't even hardly hear yourself think. And then you start moving out. You get into get in a little spot like this there was just a low spot here found it turkey hunting run could be a good spot for a hole so this little hole here decoy wise you know if we got a north wind we're kind of bunching most of them up on the north side stringing them stringing a few of them down um, but even though it's a small hole we'll still run eight dozen ducks and a couple dozen honker floaters in here it's a pretty tight hole for honkers but you'll kill a few but the honkers are mainly for visibility um, it's 100% traffic, nothing's ever going to be in this hole, but lots of ducks going back and forth over the top, so we want to get their attention, so we set a, a decent sized spread. The honkers really help with the visibility, but once they get going in here, depending on the wind, they like to use these little gaps in the trees for their runway. They'll come here, they'll come that side of the tree, they'll come through there on the northwest. Uh, it's just a really, really cool hole, a lot of loud calling. Uh, they don't want to be here, and you're making them come in there, and you're shooting them. I mean, close, 10 yards in front of the blind. I mean, you can shoot a 28 gauge all the way across this hole. But for being such a small spot, it's really, really productive and a lot of fun to hunt. You got stuff all over, uh, bordering this refuge, bordering Swan Lake, kind of all around and then down through the middle. Like the field behind the lodge, it'll have what, seven, 10,000 most days. Enough to be pretty when you got oh, customers yeah. there in the evenings and sunsets. Two, three days a week, but then there'll always be like a three week period where there's 25, 30 in it, which is really cool. In fact, the one year when it was corn, they were getting up out of there in dry field and literally like 40 yards off the back patio. Around, everybody standing around a big fire, ducks tornado, and it was cool. It's a neat spot because you watch all the birds coming off the refuge, the snows, and ducks, and specks, and everything. Yeah, I know, I love that thing. Not too fancy, we want to sit too fancy. Very nice. Got a good feel. We kind of wanted it more about like getting your buddy's duck camp. Yeah. There's soda there too, I guess, if it's okay. The lodge sits right, right here. Right out back is Swan Lake National Wildlife Refuge. I think it's 11 or 12,000 acres. Mm -hmm. And then roughly four and a half air miles up here is Fountain Grove Conservation Area. Really good public duck hunting and then they refuge parts of it. So we kind of flood stuff that borders the refuge there and then in between the two and kind of all around this big refuge. The neat area. And then the Grand is only, it's only 22 air miles roughly to the next big refuge, Grand Pass. And uh, the Grand sits right here on the bluff, flood all that along there, and it's pretty neat. But 22 miles, those ducks will trade back and forth a lot throughout the day. People don't realize how far they'll go, but they'll go quite a ways. So this area is dubbed the Golden Triangle, right? The Golden Triangle. Does Dalton cut off then? Yep. <coughs> Kind of what they call the, the Golden Triangles, Swan Lake and Fountain Grove, and then Grand Pass, Dalton Cutoffs over here. And, you know, typically I'd say we'll have half a million mallards in the triangle by Thanksgiving and kind of build throughout from there. And it can get pretty big. I don't know how you put a number on it, but lots. Plenty.
should be, I hope they got a letter on them, but they said the back several were. Okay. It would be smart if I put a G on it, wouldn't it? Or something. I think Go here, huh? Or this is a big rig. Yeah, this is man. He's gonna have like 1200 decoys. Gonna bring back our stuff from Canada and get rid of it. Okay, good. Them guys are sold up there. Yeah, so this little spot is one that I hunt most days. Uh, it's called Love Lake. Boss and I have hunted together for years and years. And we used to lease uh, one back in here close, but we saw the ducks were always coming over this a lot better. And finally it flooded and we got the opportunity to come back in here and it was really good. And then we were able to lease it for a few years before we bought it. But it's just, it doesn't look like much. It's just a natural, kind of a natural spot. Uh, refuge out in front, all the food's back behind, and it's just non-stop traffic. And I don't know what it is about it, but I've hunted very few places where ducks work the way they do in here. I mean, as consistent, I mean, just daily. I mean, a lot of times a great big blind, you're shooting them right in front of it at 15, 20 yards. I don't know. It's got, it's got some appeal from the air that, that I just can't put my finger on because it, it is a magnet. Cool spot, purely traffic, never anything on it. Wild calling, usually set eight dozen ducks and five dozen goose floaters in here every day, pick them up, don't want them to get used to them. I don't know that it matters, but that's just our, the way we do things. Goose decoys are for visibility, but we do kill quite a few geese in here also. Cool spot. All right. Like, because there's days you come down here and it's on right away. You shoot a few bunches at daylight and by 8 o'clock you're done. But from 10 to 1 is when this magic hour in here. Ducks get a belly full. They just want to go sit somewhere and loaf. They're soft. So a lot of days you'll hunt, you'll hunt a group. And like especially when you know it's going to be good. And you'll, you'll just have another group just hang tight. And <clears throat> so that, you know. Yeah, we've had a lot of guys that have hunted with us for so long that uh, they're like, you know, what do you got for me tomorrow? Like, yeah, oh, you're gonna go to this spot, and they're like, tell you what, we're gonna we're gonna have fun tonight. We're gonna sleep in and just just call us when you're close. We'll there take you know. we'll take the second there shift in love. Yeah, yeah we'll take the second okay. shift in love. So we'll like send them it. a text and say like, meet three. Fifteen minutes later, they come walking down the path, like ready it. to roll. So you can tell they got a heck of a lot of confidence in the place when they're yeah. like. We'll take a second shift. I like it. All right. We appreciate you guys uh, sticking with us today. We appreciate uh, these guys very much at Habitat Flats showing us around. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of work that uh, goes into this thing, but we hadn't even scratched the surface. Uh, amazing, amazing operation they got going here, and uh, we're excited to uh, have them using our product. So, Tony, appreciate you, man. Yeah, you Thank you guys so much. Thanks, man. Appreciate yep. you guys watching. And, Biggest uh, thing is you got to come back here in a little bit. That's right. It looks a lot different three weeks <laughs> from now. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you guys uh, on the next one.